Go, go, go! I like for I Hey everyone, I'm Winter and welcome to StarCraft. This is your new player guide. And by new player guide, I don't mean this is how you play the game. These are the best builds, the best strategies. There's plenty of resources on this channel and everywhere else out there for that. This is, you've just logged into StarCraft either for the first time today with free to play or for the first time in many years. I'm going to break down how it works, the most interesting and exciting aspects, and how to keep improving. And with that, we have, we're talking about Versus, of course, the most competitive mode, and multi, formerly multiplayer, rebranded as Versus as of free-to-play, which is happening after I recorded this, obviously. But how does that work? StarCraft is a 1v, at its core, StarCraft is a 1v1 real-time strategy game. That means you against a singular opponent in a ranked match. So what this means is the matchmaking system, I have a guide on that as well. The matchmaking system will attempt to find your level, whether it be very low or not so much. And over a series of games, it will determine through placement matches and post-placement matches who you should be playing against. You can jump in once you have ranked unlocked and just play your matches. And now something important to note, each race has a separate matchmaking rating. I'm just going to dispel a few of the common misconceptions here. We're going to go straight into the latter uh, the first thing to notice, bonus pool and points as well as division ranks do not matter. They are a holdover from a, a legacy, ironically enough, system, a legacy system where we could not see our matchmaking rating. Now, in the most competitive game, we can see our matchmaking rating, we can see our opponents. Uh, so points, bonus pool, and division rank, not really a great indicator of your level. Matchmaking rating, on the other hand, is. Each rank from bronze, silver, gold, platinum, diamond, master, and grandmaster, well, not grandmaster, that's a whole separate thing, has three tiers. Tier three, tier two, tier one, you move up, and you move into the next tier or the next league. After a game, you'll be able to see that progress bar and how far you are from that next level. All right. Another thing to point out, unranked players can play with ranked players. If you're playing unranked, you'll be playing against players who are fighting for their ladder points, and you should be fighting for it too. But before the game, neither player will know uh, if it is ranked or unranked. That's just something to point out as well. Um, now, what a lot of players get frustrated by is a lack of progress, and this is going to go into how to learn some basic resources. And, well, I'm, I'm going to, before that, I want to touch on everything through the split here. You have your campaign. Uh, campaign is pretty helpful, and the Wings of Liberty campaign is now free, but campaign is pretty helpful to kind of get the basics of the game. It's it's a fun story as well that I haven't finished, but uh, campaign isn't a terrible place to start. Co-op, you can play with a friend, and with semi-multiplayer units, it's not exactly like multiplayer, not exactly like versus, but it can be a good stepping stone to get you into it. And then you have Versus itself. You have training, which is okay. Uh, versus AI, the AI doesn't really emulate a player that well. Um, but 2v AI, 3v AI can be fun. Maybe find some friends or things like that. Unranked, no stress, no loss of matchmaking rating. You can try out whatever you want to try out. And then, of course, you have 1v1, 2v2, 3v3, 4v4, and Archon. I'm not going to go over anything but really 1v1 today. There's a lot of other information out there. You have automated tournaments, which you can play every two hours. They won't, they won't put you in Grandmaster. There are automated tournaments at every level, and every two hours you can enter. These are for matchmaking writing. They count as ranked matches, but you can also get trophies and rewards for winning as well. So you might want to check those out. And then the testing ladder sometimes comes up when there are balance changes, uh, but that's not something to be really concerned about. Of course, you have custom games, lobbies, melee, and arcade. Melee, especially with... This is how you create maps. Say you want to create a map with a friend. You just create a lobby. You can either open it to public. You can go into your friends list or into your groups and invite a friend. Simple enough. This is the most common way to practice. Practice. This is how tournaments are played. You can have observers as well, and you can see what's up. But custom games, if you have people you want to play with, 
uh, or try things out, that's a good way to do it. And there are several arcade maps out there uh, that you can use. And one I suggest for everybody, you want to just mess around? LOTV Unit Tester Online. You can build all of the units, you can have them fight, you can bring a friend in, you can have them fight as well. There's no stress, there's no rankings or anything. You can just mess around. Does one Ultralist die to a nuke? You can find out. All right. <clears throat> so that those are the basics. That's how it works. If you want more details on the ranking system, I have a guide for that. All these resources, all the extra resources are either in my guides and other players' guides. I'm going to talk about that uh, or in the description below. But I think one of the big things people ask me is how to choose your race. How to choose your race uh, in StarCraft II. Um, do I play Terran, Zerg, Protoss? Do I play random? Uh, here's my recommendation. I started out as Terran. Then I switched to Zerg. Then I switched back to Terran. Then I, then I played Protoss. And then I kind of just started playing random, but this is after thousands of games. I think to start at the very beginning, when you are a level 1 little nerdlet, you should play every race to at least level 10. This means you're playing 10, 15, maybe 20 games as each race. And then once you get to level 10 uh, on your races, then you should make a decision on which race you want to focus on. You shouldn't only play that. It's important to have perspective. But level 10 is when I think you should make a decision. And don't make a decision based on who won the last tournament or what your friends say is imbalanced. Make a decision based on you. I played Terran when I started because everybody told me Terran was the best race. You know what? In the Gold League, doesn't matter. The only, the only race that has a severe advantage in the Gold League is Koreans. So pick the race that you like the best. That's the one you're going to keep thinking in the back of your mind. I know I did. Uh, you're going to keep thinking, well, I don't know. what. Maybe a lot of people are playing Terran. I struggle against Terran, but I really like Zerg. Pick the race. You know which one you like the best. You'll know it. Uh, and focus on that one. You can switch it later. Remember, there's separate race MMR. And I recommend that at least once every... Uh, at least one-tenth of your games, you should be um, playing another race. Usually one-fifth. Actually, I'll, I'll go with one-fifth. One out of five games. So if you play 50 games in a week, ten of those should be as, say, you're a Terran Zerg or Protoss. So I've spent enough time on that. <clears throat> Now, how to learn. Now, StarCraft is a very difficult game in the sense it's 1v1 and it's hard to have direction. <coughs> We're going to be talking more generally as uh, there are plenty of guides out there and many of them on this channel that give you build orders and cheeses and all-ins and all of that. I'm going to talk more generally. How to learn. How do you get better? And the most important thing is making the game not about winning or losing but about improving the only person you should be beating repeatedly is yourself so what this means is you set a goal i'm just going to jump into a match history here let's let's go for a loss uh you set a goal where every game you have something to improve on whether it's i want to make sure i get my third base by the three minute mark uh if you're a zerg or i want to be supply capped less than 10% or 20% of the game. You need to set that goal. I'm going to play five games today where my average unspent resources are under 1,000. I'm going to play five games today where I make more than 50 workers. You set a goal. There are, there are many ways to set that goal. I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to bring this up right now. We're going to bring in SC2 Replay Stats, one of the best sites for setting those goals. SC2 Replay Stats, sc2replaystats.com is free. Uh, you can connect your Battle.net account and use a program to automatically upload your replays. The replays will go into the system and you'll get a breakdown of your matches, at least for all of your matches and for this season and all of that. Um, but another aspect of it is the training center. Now, the training center isn't 100% free. Okay, you can check two replays a day on the training center, but that can still give you an idea. And I think the training center is pretty great for silver, gold, platinum level players. Uh, at the highest level, there are obviously a lot more specific things. But if it tells you you're getting supply blocked twice as much as a gold level player, maybe you should work on that. So SC2 Replay Stats, check out the Training Center. There is more content about SC2 Replay Stats. But I think this is, if you're a new player, it's free. It doesn't take long to set up. It takes less time than losing to a cannon rush. Let's put it that way. 
So make sure to check that out. But the most important thing when it comes to learning SC2, it's not about winning, winning or losing. It's one step at a time. It's going to take hundreds of games, thousands, to get to whatever your goal might be. Diamond, Master, Grandmaster. But you're at the beginning of your journey. Might as well make it as quickly as possible. Now, <clears throat> build orders. Build orders are important. <clears throat> Having an idea of when to build your infrastructure, when to build your units, that's important. It's not everything. A lot of players are looking for the new best build. How do I get those wins in this matchup? You should be looking for a game plan. Uh, I, I keep referencing there are plenty of guides out there. But don't be stuck on a single build. That's the easiest way to hit a wall that you can't pass. If your only thing you do is make four barracks outside their base and rally marines in, I guarantee you, you will get wins. But eventually, someone will figure out how to kill marines. And then you have to go searching for an entirely different strategy, and it's going to be frustrating. Um, but let's talk about that frustration. Um, there, the sunk cost fallacy, uh, the idea that the more time you spend on something, the better you, be, you should be, uh, happens a lot in StarCraft II. Um, there's a lot of people who say, well, I played a lot of games, I should be better. It's not about necessarily working harder, it's about working smarter. Uh, and I think a good split here, I'm speaking from personal experience, which I played a lot of games, but I wasn't necessarily improving in those games, is about 70% of your time spent improving whatever amount of time, an hour a day, two hours a day, nine hours a day, 70% of your time should be playing the game. 15%, uh, now this, this should be a little bit different for each person, but I'd, I'd say 60 to 70% playing the game. 15 to 20%. Uh, so for every hour you spend playing the game, 10-15 minutes in self-criticism. You look at your replays, you're like, well, I thought I played really good that game. You go to the replay, you watch yourself, and, and every time you get supply blocked, you hold your breath. If you are running out of oxygen, well, maybe you didn't play that well. Things like that. And then the rest of the time spent maybe looking at guides, looking at streams, at pro players, and self-plug, but uh, at tournaments, things like that. There are plenty of resources out there, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. But that is another important part. Split your time and be self-critical, as well as ideally asking others who are better or objective and taking that criticism. If you can't take criticism, you should probably leave this video now. Another big thing, this is actually pretty specific, but the APM counter, the actions per minute, this doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. I have several videos getting to Masters with almost no losses with less than 100 actions per minute. You might be like, 100? That's ridiculously high. You don't need 100. You don't even need 50. If you play the game and have a game plan that goes past the 5-minute mark, eventually you will get faster. I don't care if you're 60 years old or if you're 6. You can achieve one action per second, 60 APM. If you have 60 APM, you can easily get to the Platinum League uh, as long as you're investing those actions in the right place. Of course, that takes practice, that takes time, that takes self-criticism, but you can do it. Now, another little thing, but I think is really big. When I, when I was younger, when I was uh, in my teenage years starting StarCraft, I didn't always GLHF. I didn't always GG at the end of the game. And... GG at the end of the game is just the idea. It doesn't matter how the game went, always GLHF and GG. Unless you have some beef with someone specifically, in which case, go do whatever you want to do. But I think just being in the mindset that we're in a new game, and when you lose, doesn't matter what happened. I don't care if he cannon rushed. Uh, I don't care if he, he, you, he got lucky by making Dark Templar and killed all your probes. And if you don't know what Dark Templar are, oh, you're going to have a lot of fun. But, uh... I think it's very important to always GG, and then when you type GG, just leave the game. All right, that's how it works. Um, maybe go look at the replay. You don't know how you lost, but that's very important to be in that mindset. That I, I got frustrated a lot, when, and it, that actually hurt my improvement as a player, just thinking, well, he didn't deserve that win or something like that. That's important to get over. I know there are a lot of egos, but this is StarCraft. It's 1v1. If you lost, in the end, it's your fault. All right. Now let's talk about some 
resources out there. Uh, places that you should and can check out. Um, of course, first off, you have in-game groups. Once again, a self-plug here. If you want to join my group, you can just type, this is in the Americas server. Uh, if you're on Europe, there are other groups as well. Um, but you can join the Winter SC2 group. The groups button is down here. Um, and then you can join the group, and you'll automatically be in a chat channel with other like-minded people. There are plenty of groups out there, uh, and you can find maybe some that suit your interests. As long as you get out of the general chat. Do not just, if you're reading general chat right now, get out. Get out of there. I'm sorry. Get out. All right. Uh, as well as chat channels and stuff like that. There's also some custom game communities that uh, a lot of people will play. There's a 1v1 OBS is a popular one where you can play a match and other players in-game will spectate it. Uh, these are in-game resources. Now there are plenty of out-of-game resources. I'm going to bring up a list of them here. Uh, they'll all be in the description below, but of course you have SC2 replay stats. SC2 replay stats. Um, this is the bread and butter. This is, as a new player, if you don't know where to go to, this is where you go. Now if you want more info on tournaments, professional play, uh, like higher-minded strategy, there's teamliquid.net uh, where you can find streams, you can find discussion, you can find upcoming tournaments with the schedule. You can see when the next GSL or WCS matches are on, um, but you can check that out, teamliquid.net. There's the StarCraft Reddit, which uh, has updates and community things. Um, it does have a, a very, uh, uh, you know what we're going to say, elitist community. Um, so, if you're really looking, this is not the place to go if you're looking for strategy or for a new build order or for people to practice with. The place to go are, are the smaller ones, the smaller subreddits, like r slash all things zerg. You'll find other people who are more interested in what strategies, there's all things Terran, there's all things Protoss. Uh, these, they're not heavily populated, but if you join, there'll be more people like you. Um... And, of course, there are places you can check your ranking. There's RankedForTheWin.com, RankedFTW.com. All the links are going to be in the description here if you're looking for it, where you can see how many players are playing, you can see how good you're doing, uh, and things like that. Search for specific players. SC2 Replay Stats also has this option uh, as well. Also, I, I forgot to mention that. SC2 Replay Stats, you can see the global ladder rankings, and you can see the MMR tiers. Ignore Grandmaster. Uh, the MMR tier. So if you want to know, maybe you know how much it is to get to Diamond 3, but not Diamond 2. You can find that out on SC2 Replay Stats as well. There are plenty of YouTube channels out there. A couple I can recommend that you'll probably be interested in if you're wa watching this video, aside from my own, are Pig. Uh, Pig does the Pig Daily, which is Day 9, but modern. As you can see here. As well as SC2 Highlights where you can find highlights from all the pro tournaments and sometimes other things as well. There are plenty of other channels. Loco, M Canning, Beastie QT, uh, Neuro, Falcon Paladin. There's a lot more on that. Carbot. Carbot. You probably already watched Carbot. But these are all the places you can go. Maybe you're looking for some streams and things like that. Twitch.tv slash Winter Gaming, obviously. And then, of course, many other players and pro players stream on there as well. You can find their streams through Team Liquid usually on the sidebar. Um, but one more thing I want to talk about before leaving you to the best game in the world uh, is what do you do if you have an off day? Now we're still talking about versus here but what I like to do if I'm having an off day besides obviously play another race or something like that I'm a big fan you may have heard of it big game hunters you can almost always find someone playing big game hunters in the lobbies on the arcade it's still multiplayer it's still versus it still has the same units but you have unlimited resources you can do whatever you want i think sometimes if you're having a rough day you go play team games go play arcade that's a good thing you're not taken away from your practice you're just recharging the batteries even if you're not playing protoss i think that's very important to do uh and i think a lot of people could benefit that from a little bit more often so Overall, StarCraft 2 is not an easy game. Uh, it's not an easy game to get into. It's not an easy game to play. But it is one of the most, if not the most, rewarding game in the world. 
there is no feeling like playing a, it's it's like chess except in real time with unlimited moves and both players keep making pieces and hiding them from their opponents it is one of the best experiences if you embrace it that you will have especially if you're a strategy fan uh, so good luck have fun thank you for watching if you have any feedback or you want more information on a certain topic of course you can come to the stream leave it in the comments all of those things like subscribe if we can get 1 million likes on this video then i i i would be very excited but i didn't have i didn't have anything for that good luck have fun happy star crafting and i'll see you on the ladder